In this video series, you're going to learn how to use Amazon's simple storage services, or as it's more common on Amazon S3. Now, the reason you might want to use Amazon S3, and the reason most people use it, is because you can store large amounts of data, and you can also access large amounts of data for a very inexpensive price. The reason this is advantageous is because of the large size of files these days. With the advent of internet video and audio, the files can get quite large. So many people want to offload them from their hosting account for performance reasons. By using Amazon S3, you can have your main website running off of your everyday server and have your files on the Amazon S3 server. And what this does is it allows your website not to get bogged down with file downloads if you have a high amount of traffic coming to your website and a lot of people going to download products after they purchase them this is a good solution because you don't have to worry about your website bogging down if you're doing a big launch or something like that now Amazon S3 is meant really for storing and accessing your files it does not have a lot of bells and whistles like a normal hosting account and that is why people use it just for file storage because that's really all it's meant for Amazon themselves use the S3 service to store their own files for their own sites. So if they have confidence in their servers to store all of their data, then you certainly should have the same. Now, Amazon S3 service is also very inexpensive. Really, it's just pennies a gigabyte for data storage and very low fees for bandwidth. So it's a reasonable solution. Okay, now, of course, your first step is going to be to set up an Amazon S3 account. And you can do that from Amazon.com slash S3. Now, if you already have an existing Amazon account, you can use that. And when you sign in using that account, you'll be told that you have to set up an Amazon Web Services account. And just go ahead and continue at that point. If you don't have an Amazon account you can just click up here to create an AWS account that stands for Amazon Web Services. Next page you get is just an overview of the prices of data transfer and data storage at the time that you're signing up. At the bottom it'll show your payment processors that you already have on file and you can add any others down here if you want. And click continue then you just review your selections you can also add their premium support if you want that then just click complete sign up at this point you'll get a welcome email and in that email they're going to tell you that you need an access web key in order to send valid requests to the Amazon S3 service now once you click on the link in your email you'll come to this screen and this explains a little bit about the two types of request identifiers that Amazon Web Services uses. Now you're going to need these access identifiers, your secret access key and your access key ID to be able to access your files. Now there is a lot to Amazon S3 but we can bypass all of it just by using the Firefox browser and a plugin. And I'm going to show you how to use the Firefox plugin and the browser together so that you can access your files and they can be viewed on the internet. Now the first thing you're going to need is Firefox. If you don't have the Firefox browser installed you need to install it now. Just go to mozilla.com slash Firefox and then you can download and install the browser. It's very self-explanatory. Once you got the browser installed you're going to have to get the Amazon S3 Firefox Organizer. There's a link to that in the resources file. So all you do is come to here and once you have Firefox installed just click Add to Firefox and then Accept and Install. Click Install now. And then a window like this will pop up and then you have to restart Firefox. Just click the restart Firefox button over here and then it should reopen for you when it's done. After it restarts, when you go into tools, 
you should now see here S3 organizer. Okay, so at this point, what we need to do is go back to our Amazon services and our access identifiers. In here, you have your access key ID. So copy that and open Notepad or somewhere where you can access it easily. Paste it in here and then go back to your browser here then click on show underneath your secret access key. Grab that and then paste that into your notepad session as well underneath the other one. Now go to your Amazon S3 organizer, go to manage accounts, give it a name here, doesn't matter what you call it. Paste your secret key down here and paste your access key in here. Click add. Okay, so now you have S3 account one. Close that. And here we are, S3 account one. Okay, and then you have your own computer on this side and you have your Amazon account on this side. Now Amazon folders are called buckets. So what you have to do here is create a directory and your directory is your bucket. And inside here, you will see some different things about the buckets. Okay, so what I'm going to call this is store videos. Now, you, of course, you can call them anything you want. And then I'm going to create another one called public. videos okay so then what I could do is find stuff on my computer on this side and upload it where I want over here now in my store videos this would be stuff that I'd want for my own use now over here we have something called ACL edit ACL so if we click on that what we have here are our access control and this is for each of our buckets so in the current bucket which is my storage bucket I have everyone read write and full control authenticated users read write and full control and owner read write and full control which is what I want in the case of my store videos because this is only for my use so anything I upload here is simply storage for myself and under public videos if I go to the ACL I'm going to want to edit this. So I'm going to want everyone to be able to read it. That way, if I have videos in there that I want people to be able to read, or I want people to be able to download files, I want them to be able to read it. Click OK, and that's how we set the permissions the way we need them. Okay, now I've selected a folder that I want to upload. And here's our buckets. And I'm going to upload this folder into public videos. So double click on that. And then what we'll do is we click on tour, we right click, and we click upload. Now what will happen is it will upload all of the files in the queue up into our bucket called public underscore or public dash videos. Okay, so our folder has now been uploaded inside of our bucket called public videos. Now here's something to be cautious of. Let's look at the ACL access control level. Notice that it is not readable. And that is because, now we can set it here if we want. If we go to edit ACL, we could actually set it 
to be readable here, or what we could do if we always want everything in this bucket to be readable by the public, and we could go into edit ACL, and then down here, just make sure we have apply to subfolders checked and click OK. Now when we go in here, we'll see that it is readable and all the files in here will be able to be read as well. Okay, so we've uploaded all of our video files here now. Now, to access it, we have to use a special URL to this one, and it will be our bucket name, public videos, public-videos, dot s3 dot amazon aws dot com slash tour and then slash tour dot html will be how we access this video and just to make sure that works we'll bring that up now actually now let's clear this we can clear the completed now I'll bring up a blank window here and then we will paste the URL in there that we need to use. So the generic name is bucket name. So what you will use is the name of your bucket dot s3 dot amazon aws dot com slash folder name slash file name. And that's how you access files. I'm going to include all this in a document that comes with the video so that you know what I'm talking about here and I'm going to show you in a sec here. Okay it's now loading the video into the browser here and as you can see it slows in Can State Camtasia Studio file in there and that's how we get everything to work in our Amazon S3 account. Now let's just go over how to embed your video into an existing web page. Now for this last bit here, let's just look at how to embed the code into the HTML for an existing website. So here we have the code that came with this project on my computer here. So if we open this with Notepad, we can take the embed code out of here. So the user's looking for simple embed code. So what we can do is just grab the simple embed code, do a copy, close this. I'm going to make a whole new web page here, but I could just pop that into any web page if I want. But I'm going to create a new web page. I'm just going to do it with Composer here. And go to Code, Source. And we'll just pop it right in here. And then all we have to do is put the new path to the files here. So our path is, remember, is a, the bucket name dot s3 dot amazon ws dot com slash tour slash tour dot html. Well, we don't want tour dot html in there because we're not actually accessing the file. We're just accessing the directory. The files are inside the slash tour directory. If we go back to our s3 here, we want the tour directory and then our files are inside there. So let's go back to our website here and let's get the URL to where the files are and all we have to do is in, put in front of the file names our path. Okay so just like that and then we do the same thing here. And then we do the same thing here. So anywhere where it's referencing a file, where it has a source equals, that's going to be a file that we need to put the URL in front of so that it knows to access them there. I think I got them all here zip across here. Okay, here's another one. Where did I 
there. Too many slashes going on there. Okay, so anyway. All right, so that's it. Just fix these slashes here that I somehow don't have too many of. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll save our web page here to our desktop. So we'll save that to our desktop. And now we will open that. And there it is. We've now embedded the video right into our web page. Click play and it should start to play. And you see that it is playing. Okay, so that's about all you need to know about using Amazon S3 to store your files and to have people be able to publicly access your files as well.